Hello. Hello. Let's wait for a few minutes, see if we still have any student. Okay, let's get started. Welcome to the course on Sports 336 and Nice 336. Uh, this is the online lab. I'm the tutor Ray. And in the first week, we don't have much thing to do. Basically just Wildshark installation. Of course, I will answer all the questions you have. So in first part, let's go through the course outline. And I will like point out the important thing to you. And in the second part, it's about the Wildshark installation. It's basically, we will play around with Wildshark like from week one to week five. And after that, we will have some other content like calculation or cellular network or programming stuff after week five. And part four is about the question and answer. So if you have any doubt related to, to this course, just let me know, please. So we will take around like 40 minutes to go through part one to part three. Let's get started. Mm, so if you haven't had a look of it, I can send this file to you. Just give me a sec. This is the plan of this course. Should be here. So I will send you a link. The first link is the GitHub link. You may find it useful for your labs. So I will put some like useful information related to this course and the labs in this link. 
or you can have a check. It, it should be like this. Uh, since we have like 80% of students are using Windows and 20% of students are using Mac, so we'll go through this too. Like, so we'll go through the Windows Wireshark installation and then Mac OS installation. Okay, let's have a look of this table first. Let me see, can I send it to you? Please allow me to have one minute to find this file. So as you can see here, uh, we have week one to week two is about the fundamental stuff. So you may have a lot of mathematics mathematics inside this part, but don't worry too much about it because the math is not a like important thing in this course. So if you feel this like the first two weeks is too is very hard to understand. And don't worry too much about it because from week three, you will be some like uh, Wi Fi and Bluetooth cellular network, the, the things like related to our real life. So it, it will be easier. And at week nine and 10, is some cutting edge stuff. So it will be also like not too hard. And the thing I want to mention here is about the quiz. As you can see here, every week we have a quiz at 11.30, right? So you, you need to remember to attend this quiz because if you didn't attend it, you will lose 15% of the marks of this course. So please remember to attend the quiz in Friday. 11, 13, or 30. And another thing you need to do every week is about the lab. So from week two, you are required to do the submission for every lab. So in every lab, we will ask you to submit a, like a PDF report or some code that we have learned in the lab. So this week, we don't have this, the lab submission. Uh, what formats will be the quiz be like? It will be like uh, multiple choice. We will have 10 questions about the quiz. Yeah, I will mention about it later. And that's basically all the plan we have. So just two things to keep in mind. The first thing is we have a quiz every week in Friday, like noon. So please remember to attend this one and you can only attend at this time. So make sure you are online at this time, okay? And the second thing is we have a lab submission every week from week two. So if possible, just take a note of this table. Uh, question, if I'm busy, can I just do the quiz but not attend the lecture? Absolutely. So if you are busy or have some other class or other things to do, then you just come to the quiz and answer all of the question and then close it. And that's it. Because we may have some online students uh, which cannot go to the lecture on offline, right? 
you can go to the campus and go to the lecture offline. But if you are like overseas student, uh, that which is all not, not in Australia, then you maybe uh, have a look of the recording we have. So actually, we already have our week one content. Let me find it for you. I think it's in here. It is. That's the week one content. Yeah. Yeah. In this page, you can see there's a Zoom, Zoom lecture link. It's an online session from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Fridays. And I remember we do have another recording about it. Uh, yes, so if you go to the Moodle, then you should be able to see something here and here. This one, I think here, so you can see. This one, I reckon you should have a look before the uh, Friday lecture. So you can like have a quick look of it, of this lecture, because this is the recording of the lecture. And yeah, <laughs> the audio quality is not good. Mm, I think you can post this, this issue into this form, Oren. Just says that uh, it's not clear or something. But I think we will have a clear version after Friday, after the lecture in Zoom. Yeah, but you can mention this problem in the forum. And this is the most important thing in Friday. So remember that this, because the lecture, if you don't have time, you can like listen about it later. But for the quiz, no matter you know the answer or not, I like highly recommend you to attend this quiz. Just choose something and you will get the mark. Okay. So this one is very important. But as for quiz, my cover only content in the video. Yes, so in the week one, the quiz will be like super easy. Uh, I think it's not pretty hard, actually, at least. Uh, so it would be some like common question and some calculation, I guess, if I, I have, we have learned something. But as you can see, we will start from 10 a.m. Friday, and this quiz will start at 11.30. So we will learn some stuff for one and a half hour and then attend this quiz. So it will not be a, like very complex stuff. Just pay some pay attention on the online lecture. Then you should be able to answer all the questions. But if you are like, uh, you didn't feel uncomfortable about that, then you can go through this lecture in here. So go through this, the content in here. And also we do have a, uh, this one, we have a, if you don't have time to go through the video, we can also have a quick look before you attend the lecture. It's the lecture slides. I can send the link to you right now. So if you cannot find it, but actually this one, you can find it on the Moodle. So I will just send it on the chat. So before you attend the quiz, you can go through all the contents like in here. So what is this? And what is the DMA, FDMA, CDMA? Just have a quick look of the content inside it. 
especially for the like first half because we will have the quiz at 11 30 right so we will not cover all the content in here probably cover most of them but not everything so i reckon you can uh, have a quick look of it so you you have more confidence when you do the quiz but it will not be pretty hard and yeah that's basically all the thing i want to say just remember append the quiz and another thing is the best six will be counted but we will have nine quizzes which means you can have like uh, you can you may have better mark for your time the more I'm not sure if we will have pre-recorded video every week. So for this course, because we have like a quiz in the lecture during the lecture, so I strongly recommend you to have a check of the lecture slides before you attend the lecture. So all the quiz will related to the thing we have learned. As you can see here, the quiz nine week, every week we have one and the labs, the labs will not be very hard. Just follow the instruction, then you should be able to get the full mark. And the term project is some coding stuff always related to like Python or uh, Java, if you if you can, uh, no, it will not be pretty hard. And the final exam, you can see only 40%. So if you want to get a high distinction or distinction in this course, I would say you should put more effort like in the quiz and the labs. I think the idea is we will have three hours of lecture every week. But since we will have like a break or we will have online quiz. So I reckon you should be around two hours per week. And for the lab, you should also spend like two hours per week. And for the quiz, you may need to take one or two hours to have a re review of the content we have learned. So around six hour to eight hour per week. Uh, this one is not included the term project. Okay. So I think that's all for the course overview. So just let me know if you have any doubts or we can discuss it later. Uh, I think we can uh, have a look of the uh, labs right now. Let me open the labs for you. Let's just go through the lab one. So for lab one, we don't need to do any kind of submission. In here, just open the link. I will send the file to you right now. Yeah, of course. We will talk more about the lab stuff. Yeah, so we still have one hour and 40, set, 40 minutes. So we can go through all the contents here. But I would say the lab one is, is quite easy. It basically just installation. So I will do a demonstration on the installation and then uh, we will have some like question and answer after that. So I I need to make sure all of you can capture the the packet that we need. So there's no mark for lab one, but this lab is quite important. But because we need to set up the environment, because if you cannot get the packet that we need, then you may need to buy a dongle, USB dongle. So it's a Wi-Fi adapter. 
and it may take some time. And because from lab two, we need to do the submission before the deadline. So we need, we have to check if you can capture the packet or not. If you can't, you, then you need to buy the dongle in time. So let's get started. Mm. So in the first part, is some reading stuff, just go through it by yourself. So I will just send you my instruction about how to do the installation right now. So it's a GitHub link. If you can open the link, then you be able to see some instruction. The week, week zero is getting started. And week one, I give, give you some details about it. So we start from here. In here, we want to do the installation because most of our students are using Windows 10 or 11. So we just start from here. So we have three things to install if you are using Windows. The first thing is Wildshark. So the Wildshark is pretty easy and straightforward. Just click this link, the download link, and download the 64 bits or 32 bits, doesn't really matter. Just download this stuff and then do the installation by yourself. Just click uh, next step, next step, then yeah, that's it. And then you should be able to like open the Wildshark like me, like this. Sorry. So please do the download and installation at first. So this one is the Wildshark, but if you are using Windows, we have two more things to install. The second thing is this one, Microsoft Network Monitor 3.4. So uh, the same idea, just click the link and download this stuff, download this stuff, and then do the installation. It's the, just follow the steps. And the third thing is MPCAP. It's also a library that can support us to capture the AO 2.11 packet, which is the wireless packet. So just click the link and go to the download and download this installer, okay? And follow the steps. Yes, yes, actually. So when you install the Wireshark, it will ask you if you need to install the MPCAP. If you haven't, you can go here and do the installation. Yeah, so I assume you have already done it because the installation should be pretty easy. So this is the Wireshark we need. And if you are using, using the Mac or Linux right now, uh, it's, it's like easier. Where is my, it's in here, yeah, GitHub. Uh, for Mac, you just click the link like we did in Windows. In here, you can find the installation. If you are using the uh, M1 chip, then you should install this one, the ARM. And if you are using the old version or i7, i5, i3 processor, then you should use the Intel install installer, okay? So for the Mac or Linux, it's pretty straightforward. Just install the Wildshark and Linux will be use these commands to do the installation. So as you can see here in Mac and Linux, we only need to install the Wildshark. The Wildshark can, can help us to capture the uh, packets and analyze it. And in Windows 10, we need to install the Wildshark to analyze the packets, but we also need to install the extra software called Network Monitor 3.4. This one can help us to, to collect the packet. 
So instead of using Wireshark, we will use Network Monitor to capture the packets because this software can use the Windows API to capture the packet, which will have the ISSI sig signal strength. And the MPCAP is basically a library that can support us to do that. So in, if you are using Windows, just install this three. And that's it. Then we can open our Wireshark and play around with it. So the first thing I want to mentioning here is how to do the capture because this one can capture the traffic of the internet right so how can we do it so in the first step we need to go to the setting here capture options click this button then you should be able to see the capture settings in here uh, we can manage the interface in here as you can see i have lo lots of interface in here in the list, but I only choose the Wi-Fi because we only care about the Wi-Fi packets right now. Then we can choose this one and press OK. Then you can see the interface is in here. So we can press this stop button, then it will start to capture the file in here. If you still remember, like what is TCP and UDP, then you can understand what is the contents inside, right? Uh, for this, for example, this one, the UDP packet, you can see I, I this is my address, IP address, and this is the destination IP address. Um, I'm keep keep sending the packets to this address, so it's. I assume this one is Zoom because it is using the UDP connection, right? Because I, I am like doing the online tutorial. I'm keep, keep sending the video stuff into the server. So I guess this one is the Zoom server and the left-hand side is my own IP address. So you can use this kind of uh, stuff to analyze the traffic of your uh, computer. And click this button to stop the capturing. So that's how we use Wireshark to capture the traffic. And the next one is to open the cap file because uh, we, we may need to save the capture stuff as a file for later use, right? So we can save it, call it one PCA PNG stuff and we can close it and we can uh, open it again if we have saved it like this. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward to save and open. And the next one is how to apply a filter. So I just open the file we have, we had in here. As you can see, let's just go through the contents in the Wireshark. In, in here, we have time and the source IP, destination IP, and the protocol and some other information inside it. So when do we need to apply a filter? For example, I only have a look. I only, only care about the DNS protocol right now. So how sh what should I do? So just type DNS. Then all the DNS will be in the screen like this. And what if I want to have um, specific IP address, I want to see what is the traffic between my computer and the router. So what can I do? I can say that uh, the IP.src equal to my IP address. Uh, my IP address is this. So you can apply this one. So you can see uh, the source IP is my computer and to the outside. And uh, if I want to make sure it's from my computer to the router, then I will use an end connector and then ip.dst, which means destination, equal to the uh, destination of my router. So you can see that's all the traffic from my computer to the router. And 
that's all. And how about like from my computer to the router, right? We can use very complex syntax in here. So we just do something like this. IPSRC, the source and the IPDST equal to my computer. So that's all the traffic between my computer to the router or from the router to the computer like this. So you can see that we have like lots of syntax in here in the future. So if you don't know about it, don't worry too much about it because I will teach you how to use your mouse to do it. For example, in here, I want to check this IP address only. What should I do? I just right click it. Then you can see apply as a filter. So just, just click this one and it will write everything for you. And as I mentioned before, I want to check only about uh, this one and with, for example, with the Zoom server. So I just right click this one again and choose and select it, which means we will have two clauses at the same time and they should be appear at the same time, satisfy at the same time. So that's how we use the filter. It's pretty easy and straightforward. Let me see if we have any question here. The Unilab has five shell installed, right? Are we able to uh, use Tiger VNC to connect it to it and use them to do the lab work? No, we are not able to use the labs in Uni to do that because they have like uh, disabled the capture function in the Wireshark or Relab for some security reasons. So you have to use your own computer to do, do this thing. You can only monitor the Wi-Fi traffic only. Yes, it depends on the interface because in here we only choose the Wi-Fi interface here, right? And so we, sh we can only see the Wi-Fi traffic. But if you choose like Bluetooth, you can also see the Bluetooth packet. And next step, uh, I think that's all for the Wireshark. Oh, just one more thing, how to create a new column. As you can see here, in my uh, layout here, my Wireshark, you can see we have, I have more columns in here, this one is RSSI and this one is data rate. So how can I add this stuff into my Wireshark? It's pretty easy and just uh, come to here, just randomly choose a packet you want. And for example, if I want to have a look of the uh, port number here, I want to uh, put the port number as a column, then I just right click the port number, then you can see apply as a column here. So I just click it, then you can see the port number, the source port number is in here. So that's how we apply a new column in Wireshark. Yes, we are going to have a recording of this, this tutorial. Um, that's how we apply a new column and we will use it next week. So don't worry too much. And I will teach you again about the same thing next week. Just mention that is some fundamental idea about the Wireshark. And the, in this week, the first task is to capture the packets that have the signal strengths. So as you can see here, even I have the RSSI or, or signal strength column, but none of the packets have the information about it. So how can I get the signal strength when I'm using the Windows? 
so that's the reason we need to use another software, which is the uh, this one, the Microsoft Network Monitor 3.4. So just simply download the software and do the installation. I have already done it. So I just open this one in here. This software is very easy to use. It will be uh, in here. At first, you need to check the interface like we did in the Bioshock. So I, in here, I just choose the Wi-Fi. And then I just uh, click the new capture here. And in the new capture, I can uh, use the start button F5 to stop the capturing. So you can see, just like the Wireshark, the same idea. You can capture all the traffic from my wireless adapter to outside. And you can see all the protocol has been catched. And after a few seconds, I press the stop button. And then I can save this capture file as test one in, in the desktop. Then I can open this one, test one dot cap. So I just open the file with Wildshark that, so you can see the contents in here has been output into here. And then let me check if we have any data that have the signal strings or the RSSI. So just go to the top of it, you can see we do have some ISSI and signal strengths right now, right? So that's how we use this software to capture the packet, which may include the signal strengths or ISSI information. So, so that's why we need to install two different so softwares. And for the Linux and Mac OS, you don't have this question. Simply just use the Wireshark to do all the stuff. So just simply open the Wireshark and do the recording. Then you, you should be able to capture the signal strengths. And you can uh, find it inside the AO2.11 data here, information here. So that's all the tasks we need to do today. Make sure you can capture the signal strengths or RSSI in the packet. If you can see this kind of stuff, then you'll be safe for next week. Uh, I think the recording will be posted um, today, in the end of today. Actually, we have two list like the recording list is a youtube playlist so you need to go to the youtube and assess this recording of the tutorial but let me have a double check of it right now and please have a try of this stuff by yourself right now so i need to make sure everyone can capture the signal strengths or issi by yourself today. So please let me know if you have any trouble. Yes, the YouTube link only have the introduction right now. Uh, uh, the recording will be uploaded very soon after the meeting.
uh, is it mandatory to attend the lab? Or if I missed the lab, I have a review of that, we'll call them later. It's okay that you like do not attend the lab. So it's not mandatory and there's no mark about attendance. But we strongly recommend you to attend the online sessions. So if possible, go to the offline tutorial. But if you are like not available, come to the online session and like you can figure out the question like on, in time about the labs because we want you to have like highest mark as possible. Uh, the signal strengths are the RSSI are the same thing. No, they are not the same thing, but the idea is the same. If you can get the signal strength, you can calculate the RSSI. The RSSI is basically, you can consider them, uh, they are the same thing. Yeah, the value, value are the same just. Uh, but actually, this one should be minus 54. So in different device, they have different output in here. For the ISSI, I think it will always from zero to 100. So the ISSI is a kind of indicator. It doesn't represent anything. But the signal strength, it does represent the, like, the power of the signal. Yeah, you know more about it in Friday. Yes, that's all we need for the signal trains. And also check if you have the data rate and the noise and other information, but the signal strength is the most important thing. So in the following labs, we will play around with this stuff. So if you can see this uh, signal strength, then you don't need to buy the dongles in the link here. I have, yeah, that's fine. Data right. So if you have some trouble on um, like capture the uh, ISSI or signal strength, then you may need to buy a USB dongle Wi-Fi adapter. So we give you a list about the popular dongle. And but basically all the adapter have this kind of chipset will work. But just a reminder about the, like purchasing this kind of stuff is that you need to make sure it can work in your computer. For example, if I am using the like newest version of, of Mac and I bought this one, TP-Link Archer, before I buy this stuff, I need to check, check it online. Just go to the website of the download of their support in here. So I just find this one and go to the support and check the driver. It has the compatible driver for my system. For example, if I am using the Windows, it should be fine because it will support all the Windows and I should be able to use it, right? But for the Mac in here, I can see for the Mac, it can only support Mac OS 10. I, I remember the newest version should be 12 or 13 for Mac operating system. So if I am having, I'm using the newest Mac, then I should not buy this one because it will not be supported. So that's the idea. So just remember before you buy the dongle to check the website if they have their like related driver for the computer. Just go to the, their website. Uh, this one is not pretty easy to find. How about this one, AC68?
driver. Windows 10, Mac. Okay, so you can see there are supports. I think it looks fine, but it's 2020. So probably you need to check if the version is compatible. For, for example, this one, they also only support Mac 10, Mac OS 10, right? So before you buy the dongle, check everything about the driver. You have to make sure it can be used in your computer. Otherwise, you will not you, you will not work. So that's the idea. Let me check if we have any question. Can you show how to use the network monitor again to get the RSSI and signal strengths? Yes. But in here, just open the, the network monitor at first. I will exit this part, new capture. So this is the start page, right? So I first step is to choose the Wi-Fi adapter interface. Select this one. And you can check the uh, information about it. And then we can start a new capture. So we just press the new capture. And then we click the start button. Then you can see a uh, lot of traffic has been captured. And that should be enough. So I just stop it, stop it. And then I save, save as. So I just output this information to a file. I just call it test2. And then I will just find the file and drag it or use the file open to open this one. Right? So it should be test, test2. And that's how we use the Microsoft Network Monitor to do the capturing. Then you need to check if you can, if you can find the signal strengths. What do I need to do to switch from on-campus lab stream to this online lab stream? Uh, it should, it's fine. So there is no compulsory attendance check about the labs. So you can feel free to attend any labs if you want. But if you feel like, uh, if it's possible, just send an email to, to your tutor. I think it's Gary, right? Just send an email to Gary and told him uh, you want to switch to online session. But yeah, just feel free to attend any session in your most convenience. If you have time, can you repeat the capture step by step by step again? When I open the network monitor, it's all blank. So is it like this? Or like in the start page, it's all blank? I'm not pretty sure which one is that. So uh, in the first step, we need to choose the Wi-Fi wi here. So if you cannot find the Wi-Fi, then uh, you may have like driver problem because your computer cannot find the Wi-Fi interface. If you can find it, just select it and then new capture and then start it. You can get the ISSI and signal strengths, but have trouble finding the, the data rate. Uh, Okay, find it. Uh, but my data rate is unknown in that mode. Is that normal? Yes. Don't worry too much about the data rate. It's okay. Yeah, because most of the network card will not be able to capture the information about, about this part. 
So if you can get the signal strength, then all good. Okay, I cannot find the Wi-Fi. There's no Slack network there after the start. Uh, in here, you cannot find the, you cannot find this stuff, is it correct? You cannot find the Wi-Fi. Is there any other thing in here? Oh, the whole section is not there. There's nothing. Oh, that's weird. So you, you are not able to select the networks. Let me see if, you, if it's possible. Yeah, could you please share your screen so I can have a look what happened? So I will stop my sharing and I will allow you to share. Yeah, you can share your screen right now. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, we have different layout, but that should be fine. Let me see. So what happens if you press the stop button? Uh, now uh, in NetMoon driver, so you don't have the driver. Don't worry, you just press yes, and then go to the, uh, can you see the button like in the le left hand side of the start? This capture setting, capture setting. So where's the start? Yes, left hand side. Uh, okay, I see. Yeah, there's no option for that. Like, let me let me check. Can I choose this one? Oh, where is your start page? That's the oh, I see. Uh, like. Close this one, please. And next to the capture one, can you see the start page? Yeah. And there's nothing inside the networks. So the, the, you uh, I think, do you have the like Wi-Fi connection in the computer right now? Are uh, connected to Wi Fi, but you are not be able to see the stuff. I think the first thing you need to check yeah, you need to check if you are like use the um, administrator to open the software. So close it and reopen it with the admin privileges. It's weird that you cannot find any interface in here. And the second thing is probably is the NetMoon library. I think it's kind of missing a library. Ah, I see. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, let me see who is the genius in the chat. Uh, Yu Hua Zhao. Yeah. Yeah. 
Can anyone get a like signal strength in here? Let me just share my screen. Yeah. So if you cannot, just let me know. Mm. Okay, just make sure. In, so in this week, all we need to do is just get this stuff and that's it. So we will start like play with it from next week. And yeah, just let me know if you have any question. Because if you are using the new newest like Mac, then you should you may have some problem with it because the newest version of Mac will not be able to capture this kind of information. Yeah, is everyone if everyone is happy then like we can go to another part. So, so it's more do you have any question related to this course? Just let me know. Yeah, so in here, uh, let me see. I probably I should add one part like the calculation uh, stuff because I want to help you to get like more marks in this course. So like uh, week one, review five. I will try to add something here. So links record link. and the what is the other thing? Is the uh, uh, slides and the useful tools. Okay. Yeah, I will try to add more information to the GitHub link so you can have a check of it later. And I will stay here until the end, but that's basically all the content we have for today. So just make sure you can get a signal strength and you're all set. And please remember to attend the Friday quiz and you can feel free to come and live whenever you want. And yeah. That's basically all. If you have any trouble with the like installation after this stuff, then you can send me an email or post it on the forum as soon as possible, okay? Because the first week's environment setup is very important. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for coming. So feel free to leave and I will see you next week. But if you do like have some question, stay here. And you can share your screen.
Yes, for the preparation for the uh, labs, definitely, or for the quiz, lab, definitely. So first you need to uh, go through the lecture slides, right? And if you have time, go through the content, go through the recording we have in the lecture. So make sure you can understand uh, all the stuff, like including the calculation, because we have 25 sec minutes to do the uh, do the quiz. And we have 10 questions, multiple choice question. So for the calculation, you may take a lot of time to do it because you, if you are not familiar with it, you need to search on the slide about the equation and do the calculation. So I want you to go through the calculation. And if we have some example on the slides, just try to do it by yourself. So because we will test your calculation. So you may need to be familiar with that. And I will also try to upload some like useful tools, for example, the calculator of something. So you can use the calculator to do the calculation and instead of use the equation. So you can save your time, but you also need to have a check before the attend, attend the quiz. So, so don't worry too much about the first week because the best six will be counted while we have six quizzes. So just take it easy and um, let me check. And yeah, if you want to share your screen, please sh share that. Preparation for the labs and uh, nothing special for the labs. I would say the labs is pretty easy, but the preparation for the quiz is a little bit hard. Okay, I can see. Um, hello. Hello. Yeah, um, so I um, started the network monitor. Yeah. And to capture packets. And um, I opened the file in Wireshark. Yep, I can so see that. How, how do I add the RSSI? Yeah, could you please just uh, select a packet like UDP? Yeah, this, this one should be fine. And check what what, what do we have in, inside this packet? uh I just scroll down yes yes i can see you have ao 2.11 radio information right just double click that oh uh, yes expand that did you see the signal strength over there and yeah. right right click it and apply as a column here oh then, then you like you will have the information okay and uh, yeah, and you can try to read through all the contents in here. You can see what kind of information do we have. Uh, basically, we'll play around with the, this kind of information, like regarding to the uh, AO2.11 protocol. Yeah, and you're all set right now. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Yeah, all good. Uh, Down for lecture one, we're going to make it. Mm, what kind of stuff? Preparation. Uh, I'm going to mark the labs. Yes, or the tutors will mark the labs. <laughs> Please go easy on us. Yeah, you just follow the instruction. Don't worry too much about the labs.
feel free to share your screen. We need to make sure we can capture the signal strength to, for the day. Yes, please. Yes, please share your screen. Okay, I can see you're using your Mac OS and there is no, um, can you please show the version of your Mac? Ah, it's Big Sur, so you're using the new version of it. It's not the newest, but like, it is pretty new. The version is pretty new. Uh, let me see. Mm, the like the sim simple solution of that. Uh, I can find is in here. Let me send it to you. So I will send it through the chat. As you can see, you cannot capture the AO2.11 packet. So uh, what can we do to do that is to use this stuff. Oh, sorry, I sent to a wrong person here. So you can see I have sent you a link about the article. So can you check if you have this sniffer? Because I have tried it by myself today. It works, but it will enter the monitor mode, which means we will capture all the traffic outside of our computer, just like sense the packet but it's not the traffic between our computer to the outside. Uh, I guess he used that method and disconnected. Uh, because when, once we enter the monitor mode, we will be disconnected. So that's why we don't play with monitor mode today. So for the newest version of Mac, we need to like probably need to buy a dongle or use a old computer we have if we have oh good so this article is teach us how to capture the AO 2.11 package but it, it work but that's actually what we want so it, it can help you to do the like labs, it, but the experience will be pretty bad because we want you to connect with a mobile phone. While if you use this articles method, you will be entered the monitor mode and will not be able to capture the packet between the device to the mobile phone. So if possible, try to use a dongle or use a, like another laptop to, to do this thing. But this one is the backup plan. So uh, anyway, you can do the capturing. But I suggest you to like uh, use a dongle or find a, another computer, Windows computer or something, it will be easier to do the test. Or the Raspberry Pi will work pretty good or any Linux is, is also work pretty good.
yeah, just let me know if you have trouble with it. Just post it on the forum or send me an email. Yeah, and if you are uh, going to buy a dongle, check their driver at first. Basically, every dongle will work, but you need to have a check of the driver if it's supported or not. Otherwise, you will not work. Yeah, as long as you get the signal strength, it's okay. Because we can do the calculation to get the ISSI. Uh, that's fine. Will we be using monitor in lab two? No, we are not going to use the monitor mode in the future labs. Because the monitor mode is more like uh, pen test, pen testing, or the hacking stuff. But I recommend you to buy one. Because uh, if you need to buy a dongle, it's better to buy a like the dongle supports monitor mode. So in the future, if you are doing a security course, you can also use it. But yeah, basically just buy a random mod, a random dongle, it should work. Just buy the cheapest one if you want. If I only get a super note, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, please send me the like public message so everyone can see your question and if they have the same one. Uh, my. You didn't hear my answer of which question. I didn't see that. You please send the question again. Uh, if I only get the signal strings, but not RSSI, is that OK? Yes, it is. So if you can get the signal strings, then you, you are OK. Don't worry.
ไปอ uh, I can't find the signal strength. Yes, please. Could you please share your screen? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you are using Windows, right? So the first step is to use the monitor, uh, network monitor, to capture the stuff. Have you done it? Okay, so as I can see that, uh, I can clearly see that the RSSI in line 22, right? So you, you must have the signal strength. You can see RSSI, so this one is what we want. So just uh, save this one to somewhere, just file and save that. Yeah, save to somewhere and open it with Wireshark. Just give it a name. And open this one with Wireshark. Just type one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. So in here, I want you to choose a UDP packets or TCP packets at first. Or uh, AO2.1 packet is also good. And you can find the stuff in the radio information. Yeah. And right click it. And apply as yin yong wei Apply as the column. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, welcome. 